Good day, everyone. This is Chris at the Ancient Scholar. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, more testing terminology, and this terminology is is statistical in nature, like some of the other temp terminology that I've talked about. I am not going to quantitatively discuss uh, what they mean as far as the mathematical formalism goes, but I do want a good qualitative. I want people to have a qualitative appreciation uh, for what these concepts entail. And these are the concepts of sensitivity and specificity. Now, just like some of the other concepts I talked about in the last video, we often um, we often confuse these concepts. So these concepts are often often used as synonyms when, in fact, they're really not uh, synonyms at all. Uh, there's a difference between them, and and as always, the differences can be a little subtle. So let's talk about sensitivity. What what is sensitivity? What does it mean? In the when we talk about tests, arterial blood gases, uh, hemoglobin hematocrit lab tests, so on and so forth, um, in, in that setting, in, in, in that environment, uh, sensitivity is defined as a probability of having a positive test if you have a certain disease or you have a certain problem or condition. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a, a problem, but... So sensitivity is a probability of, of getting a positive if you have the disease. Okay, Specificity. Specificity is a probability of having a negative if you don't have a disease. So let's just go ahead and uh, run through an example that should hopefully clear this up. And let's just say that I've been given a couple million dollars to make a pregnancy test. And um, they want me to design a pregnancy test, and uh, I've been told uh, to make it as sensitive as possible. If I can make it the most sensitive test that exists, then I can get my million dollars, and that's that. So I think to myself, and um, you know, I look in the mirror, and I go, you know what, I'm a human being, and um, human beings are quite capable and, and often um, like to take the, the path of least resistance and um, I'm certainly in this case uh, going to think smarter not harder here and uh, go the path of least resistance because I want all that money. So what I do is I design an interesting test and I design a test um, that is 100% sensitive and uh, the test goes out in the market and uh, something interesting happens. I start getting lots of complaints. And the, the, the people that paid me millions of dollars to make this test said, hey, everybody is positive. Everybody who takes your test is positive, even people who aren't pregnant. You, um, we're going to have to take you to court because, well, you know, you didn't uh, follow through on your part of the deal. And being kind of a sly guy, I'm going to go, oh, I did follow through. My test was 100% sensitive. And hopefully that scenario um, brings to light what I mean by sensitivity is um, that uh, I guess the question I ask you is, did I develop a sensitive test? Well, let's go back to the definition of uh, a sensitivity. Sensitivity is a probability of getting a positive if you have a disease. So let's say that 10 people take my pregnancy test and five of them are pregnant. But my test says they're all pregnant. Well, did I um, identify all the pregnant people? Did my test identify every single pregnant person? Um, was the probability of that test identifying somebody who was pregnant 100%? And you would have to say, well, yeah, actually, it said everybody was uh, pregnant. So clearly, you identified every pregnant person. So... My test was very sensitive, but where it's the issue, it's lacking in specificity. It was lacking in specificity in that, yeah, it identified everybody who's pregnant, but it didn't differentiate pregnant people from non-pregnant people. Okay, so obviously that's a that's a pretty um, extreme example. But hopefully it makes this uh, sensitivity and specificity business a little easier to understand that for, for me to have a good test, I need to have a test that is both sensitive, it can identify people that have the disease, but I want a test that's specific as well 
that it can identify the people that don't have the disease. Okay, so I can tell who has it and who doesn't. Now, a lot of the tests aren't that way. There are a lot of tests that are highly sensitive, and there are a lot of tests that may be highly specific, but there, um, maybe some of those tests are not, are highly sensitive and not specific, or highly specific and not highly sensitive. So sometimes when we're trying to diagnose a patient, we're, we may have to do multiple tests, and we may do a test that's sensitive, and then we'll do another test that's specific, and then maybe do another test that's a little sensitive and a little specific to try to narrow in on the, on the real diagnosis. Um, so tests, we talk about lab tests, they're, they're rarely black and white. Um, you're not going to you rarely run into a situation where I have a test that is 100% sensitive and 100% uh, specific. Um, sometimes people that have diseases get missed. We, we don't identify the disease. And sometimes people that don't have diseases are identified as having a disease um, based on the sensitivity and specificity of these tests. So um, we need to keep that in mind when we're looking at certain labs and when you're reading in your pathophysiology books and doing um, your discussions, uh, discussion assignments, um, when you come across a test and it says, you know, it's highly sensitive but not as specific you need, you need to recognize, okay, this test is good at identifying the people that have the disease, but maybe not so good at uh, specifying who doesn't have the disease, and then vice versa. So that is the difference between sensitivity and specificity. Hopefully that makes some intuitive sense, and hopefully that makes a little more sense now in clinicals if you were to hear uh, somebody talking about sensitivity and specificity. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the video off here, and as always, thanks for hanging in there.